Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to part 3 of my Ma Click campaign here in Hearts of Iron 4, Moe Reich. Alright, let's do this event. Ma Bu Feng seizes Jingning Council. Ma Ling was not entirely surprised when the Jingning Council did not appear for their meeting yesterday. No doubt they are trying to avoid both him and Ma Bu Feng in order to stay neutral in their dispute. In spite of this confidence, Ma Lin did engender to check on Ma Bu Feng's estate that day. Approaching the door, Ma Lin spotted his nephew in talks with a member of the Jinning Council. Approaching the window, several more members came into view. Being the man of reason, Ma Lin resolved that the only way to ensure the Jinning Council can resume is if he takes up residence in the meeting hall. Rotten nephew you are. So we're getting stability, we're getting political power, Nat Pops are getting pretty popular now. They're now the most popular party in here. What is this? Ma Bu Feng humiliates Ma Lin out of office. Not a pog champ. Um, Ma Lin was greeted by Ma Bu Feng and several of his now loyal Jinning councilmen along with two guards. Before Ma Lin could respond, the two guards seized him and carried him out of the hall. Ma Lin was shoved into the servants' quarters where he could hear the Jinning council meeting start from a distance. A pox upon our houses. Pox has changed. Now the Jinning Ma will become the ruling party. Ma Bu Feng will be the leader of the conservative, social conservative party. So, so like, Ma Bu Feng is not a social conservative, but will rule that party because there's been like a coup. Uh, so we get modernist and warmonger. Social conservatives' popularity goes down by 100, so they're out, uh, essentially. So it doesn't really matter who is their leader. And all fine, Ma Bu Feng. I guess I am your little pog champ because I just simped you right into office. Uh, so right here, Ma Bu Feng is the younger brother of Ma Bu Quinn and the son of Ma Ching. Actually, did I read this before? Go ahead and pause it and read it. I think I read this in episode one. But anyway, so we got modifiers here now. A modernist, which is going to hurt stability, but it's going to increase our war support. It's going to increase our factory output. It's going to increase our division attack as well. Also, we're a warmonger, but that's an AI modifier, But so that doesn't really affect us. But uh, there we have it. Look who's in charge now, along with Senketsu. Who could possibly defeat us in this war? It's, uh, it's ours to win. Um, so... What were we doing? Uh, we were going to... Ah, okay. Do you guys feel that lag for a second? Okay. Uh, so, I think that Mongolia is going to do, like, some raids or something from the north. What the heck is this? Social Democratic Mongolia? Solindanzan. I've never seen this. I don't know what this is. What? Man. I was so excited for the China rework, and I'm starting to realize that I really didn't play all of it. Like, because I played some of it on my own personal time. Like, and of course I did like the the L, the left Comintang and the Ching, and I think I did a Feng Tian live stream. But I need to hang out here in China some more. There's some weird stuff going on. Recent events in Yushu, uh, back down here in the demilitarized zone. Ma Bu Feng has begun to center his attention more on the conflict going on currently within Yushu between our forces and the Tibetans. And with this has come a rather sudden proposal. Bu Feng has made a publication called Recent Events in Yushu, containing a summary of current defensive measures, the effects of other warlords like uh, Liu Wenhu, and Risk of the Region is in meant to be viewed... Okay, that needs to be grammatically fixed. pro -er, Central Chinese Authority. While such an effective summary would help organize efforts to defend the region and secure support, Vod Ma Lin is worried that it being published would increase Bu Feng's renown among all of China. It'd secure him more support within the council than he already possesses. Well, Lin's already gone, actually, so... I think this is a leftover event from, uh... From the frickin' decisions, uh, down here with the Yushu conflict. Uh... So... Or actually, this isn't even it. Yeah, it's gone, so this is kind of like just an extra event. So what's just gonna help me right now? I guess let's increase the popularity of national populism. Yeah. That's a little bit strange here. Okay, so we could reposition Ma Biao and Yushu. Despite Ma Biao residing from his position of defending Yushu from the Tibetans after our successful intervention in the Tibetan Sichuan War, the reemergent threat of tribesmen and raiders makes his presence required once again. However, positioning what is seen as the hero of the Tibetan War will surely knock out Noah noticed by our southern neighbors. Okay. Just getting some water. Um. So that's going to help our support, but we're going to lose 500 mile power. Also, Ma Biao will stop being a general because he'll be the governor now. All right. Mongolian border raids from Ulankab. Ever since the death of family patriarch Ma Foxian, tensions on both the northern and southern border have been getting worse and worse. 
Border raids from Mongolia, primarily in the province of Ulankab, have caused much chaos over the recent weeks. This is not wholly unexpected, though we should be prepared for it if this escalates further. This is fine. Okay, um, so... This will increase our presence by 10%. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't know if Tibet just backs off. I kind of hope they don't, but Sichuan is going to attack them at some point as well. So when the war happens, we're going to have to sneak in here and get to Lhasa before they do. Um, also, oh, no. let's uh, let's redistribute the people in charge here. Obviously, Ma Bufang should be in charge of everybody. And let's get a different cavalry commander. And I can think of nobody more appropriate at the moment than Ma Ji Yuan. Uh, did they have a bio here? Yeah. <clears throat> The baby of the family, only 15 years old. The youngest commander in the Ma family, Ma Ji Yuan, serves under his father, Ma Bufang, in order to bring his father glory within the Ma clique. Ma Ji Yuan has focused his efforts in the Qinghai army on modernizing their cavalry brigades, hoping they are able to overcome vast distances to the north should the need arise. So we got a 15 year old ready to go up against Social Democratic uh, Mongolia. Peasant march in the capital. Democratic Mongolia. Goodness gracious. Oh, there's a Buddhist revolution thing there that could happen. Yeah. I've got to play more China. i got to do finished Feng Tian. That's what I have to do because I always thought that Feng Tian was one of the best nations in Kaiserreich before the China rework. Post-China rework? Forget about it. All right. Now then. Um, let's set up... Oh, man. We could go for the eight-point plan, though. Mm, let's see, we can get more war support. I kind of want to come down here because there's we can get another research slot. So I kind of want to rush that. All right, the power slugger in Qinghai between the legalistic Ma Lin and his nephew, the militaristic and uncompromising Ma Bufang, has boiled over. With its conclusion, order in Qinghai must be reestablished. Okay. So I think we could just kind of slam forward for a while here. Oh, you need to obviously have red as your color. There we go. <clears throat> a large Mongolian force is moving to uh, Guisue, or it's a... Uh, where's that, actually? I forget. I think that might be a city that's actually not labeled on here. Oh, there it is. No, yeah, yeah, here we go, here in Ulankab. Some of our scouts have reported a large force of Mongolian soldiers moving towards the main city of Ulankab, Guisai. Should the Mongols take it, they will have de facto control of the whole region. Though there is a garrison in Guisue, many fear it will not be enough to beat the quickly approaching Mongols. Ma Hongkui is currently in the region with his force, so he may be able to fight them off. Send a force under Ma Hongkui. Ooh, that was high pitched. I go infantry expert for her, but we'll think about that later. Oh, she lost! <clears throat> Ma Hongkui's forces traveled for a day and night to finally reach the Mongolian force. In the early hours of the morning, Ma Hongkui. I'm going to say Hong because I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing things wrong. Sent in his soldiers to attack the Mongolians, who looked like they were just camping. However, it was a trap. After Hong sent his main forces in, the group of Mongolian cavalry had snuck behind and attacked on the back lines at the same time as the battle going on at the front. Ma Hong's force was caught in the middle and beaten. Uh, Hong, Hong was able to make his escape, but he lost the battle, and the Mongol forces almost reached Guisui. Damn. Uh, you know, let me try to find out. Uh, let's see. Hold on. How to pronounce in Chinese, although in Mandarin, I should say. Um, hold on, let's see. How to say Hong Kui. Uh, I'm not finding anything. Just, yeah, just articles about Ma Hong Kui. Uh, I probably actually should show you guys what he actually looked like in real life. Give me a second here. Ah, uh, Wikimedia. I'm not a fan of Wikipedia, but Wikimedia, you're always reliable for pictures. So this is who Lady Satsuki is, actually. Lady Satsuki. Um, the, the Mongolian general Buyan Delgar, who led the large Mongol force through Ulankwab, has been able to defeat any Ma forces in the area and has taken Guisui. There he declared it now under Mongolian control. However... We cannot. We can still act. Ma Hongbin is also now in the area and can move his forces up to try to take the city. So Hongbin is the other field marshal. Remember, let's try to keep track of that. You can read their bio right there. There, that was the one who Ma Fulu was their father. Uh, so send a force. Ooh, is this gonna work? I don't. I don't think it's gonna. Cause the Ma click always gets screwed. I don't think I've 
I maybe once have seen the Ma Click win, but really what usually happens is it just ends up being a grind forever. Ma Hongbin has lost. The Mongolians take Gu Sui. Ma Hongbin decided to try to go for a full frontal attack against the Mongolian force with his own force. Foolish! To avoid being scouted and routed by the Mongols. Therefore, he charged directly at the city. But by that point, he had already fallen into Bayan Delgar's trap. From behind hills on both sides of his force emerged groups of Mongol cavalry who pincered Hongbin's forces, leaving them with two options. Either retreat and concede the city, or move into the city and try to take it, then deal with the outside cavalry afterwards. In this critical moment, Hongbin decided to push through to try to take the city. However, much of his force had already started to retreat, seeing the city as a death sentence. With that, Ma Hongbin's weakened group was forced to retreat. It seems Ulankov has now fallen into Mongol hands. Damn. So I think this is actually going to move the province line. Yep. That sucks. <clears throat> the Tibetans are reinforcing the border. It seems that the Tibetans of the south have put pressure on the legal Qinghai border with small amounts of guards. While this is more a show of force than any actual action, the presence of these guards will make it significantly more difficult to send raiders to attack Yushu. Damn them. So they're increasing their presence, but we're getting more war support. Mm, we certainly do not have... I think we're going to need like another month probably or more before we can get the infantry equipment that we want. <clears throat> Mabufeng allies in Jingning revealed. Uh, the Jingning Council's unspoken divide was finally brought into the open today during an interesting conversation between Ma Lin and his subordinates. Arriving to the meeting several minutes early. Okay, this is a mistake. Yeah, because we've already cooed it. Um, yeah, Mabufeng. Well, I guess it's because of the province, but yeah, we, we definitely don't need to still be seeing these events. Okay. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Let's just kind of try to fill the border, I guess. Union Syndicalista achieves Italian majority. Well, how about that? Uh, okay, we could reinforce Ma Bao. Um, Mao, Bao, Mao Biao will become a general again. It will increase our presence in Yushu by 15%. Oh, you, oh, no, Tibet will, if we do that. He needs monthly reinforcements to keep the garrison up. We might expose... If we fail to him if we fail to keep him supplied, this might expose an opportunity for the Tibetans to make major gains in the region. Oh, if it's not selected, Tibet will get more uh, power, more, more uh, control of the area. So, we can set up policing in Yushu. Well, one of Ma... Uh, Chi's policies in the Yushu 8-point plan was to set up police in Yushu. This was never met before his un untimely death. With rising tensions in the town once again, maybe it's time to live up to that promise. Uh, yeah, let's do that. And let's also reinforce him. Actually, I probably should have waited on that because I'm sure it's going to recycle. So I should have waited as long as possible. What's this? Ugh, got max I've maxed out my supported divisions. I'm actually slightly over what I'm supposed to be right now. So this up here. This is a thing that's supposed to help with division spam. Okay, because the total provided by factories was lower than that provided by total manpower, that was used instead. Plus five to cap. Changes to the above take up to one in-game week before they're reflected in the calculation. We have currently exceeded our capacity, and the only way to alleviate the stress on our country will be to remove some of our divisions. So the thing that really sucks is the consumer good factories. Actually, right now, the factory output overall is what hurts the most. Okay, going forward. For too long, our nation has sought to be but one cog in the great Chinese machine. While we are undoubtedly Chinese, we must not forget the native inhabitants of our lands, the Hui, and the ethos of service which won it. So this will replace the Han Hui divide with Han supremacy, which is going to increase our war support. <clears throat> yeah, Anqing is looking good right now. I'm going to coup in Siam. Hmm. Yeah, there's so much fun stuff to do. You know, you got the Turks out here, you got the new Mongol stuff, Feng Tian. Uh, you know, freaking there's a certain somebody who can take charge of the Hunan click, who I won't talk about right now, but it's like gonna become mandatory that I play them. <laughs> um Okay. So we could reinforce the border some more. Keep increasing our presence there. Boy, we're starting to really use up a lot of uh, this stuff, though. Ooh, do we want to send in the army? <clears throat> let's... Yeah, yeah, our stability's pretty low, so let's... Ooh, you know what? I should have gotten the infantry equipment 
manufacturer with that power instead. Oh, nothing will make you remember what you could have spent it on faster than hitting click. It's like that whole thing. It's like, you know, what's the best way to check for uh, uh, misspellings in that important email or uh, paper that you're working on? Click send. <laughs> You'll find them all right away. Ah. Mabu Fang begins public works. Mabu Fang has come forward with an ambitious proposal to increase the aqueducts that feed Jining from Qinghai Lake, citing the increasing amount of refugees pouring into the city from Sichuan. That's because of the famine. Mabu Fang plans to achieve this by commissioning officers to order Corve laborers to build additional aqueduct lines. Mabu Fang has also implied in this promise that the Buddhists of Kumbu will become so desperate for water they will yield to the council to avoid starvation. Another audacious promise, so we are increasing our power down here, political power. We're up to 53%. Everybody's on the far right. Look at that. <laughs> Refugees from Sichuan. Uh, speaking of which, drought and the aftermath of a brutal civil war has caused a terrible famine to grip Sichuan. With the government of Sichuan seemingly being incapable of solving these problems, many have simply given up and fled the province by the tens of thousands for the greener pastures in our lands. While they aren't the only ones that have fallen on hard times in China, many both among our population and in our government demand that we do something to help our fellow Chinese. Others believe, and hardly without reason either, we can't help them while the South is being overrun by Tibetan bandits. Given the scale of the situation, turning them back to Sichuan is only bound to make matters worse. Regardless of our actions, our government has filed an official request to the government in Chongqing that they increase efforts to solve this crisis, try to help out however we can. So this is going to hurt our political power, but we're going to get more weekly manpower and stability for the next three months, because you know, people are people are joining in. If we want to give them a rifle as they come in, you know, I'm sure they'd be happy to fight for us since we're giving them food. Okay. Ooh, yeah, you see, this is what I was talking about. I should have waited for it to, you know, almost be done. So that way we could, uh, it would take a longer time to recycle. Okay, research slot. We definitely want that. Uh, emphasizes modern education that is separated from the old Min Huan system. Eastern teachers can be hired to teach in our cities. Okay. Poland has elected a king. Actually, who did they go with? Carol Olbrecht. We can do the motorized thing, but I think we're going to want to go with some kind of some maybe superior. I'm, I'm kind of debating between superior and grand battle plan, although does mobile infantry give cav bonuses? There's like motorized stuff. Hmm. Uh... Maybe do... Hmm. What what's the width of my current cap? See, the thing is, with the with the, the the division limiter, we're not gonna be able to calf spam super well. And eventually, we're gonna have to go um, east because, of course, the the longer term goal is to take Beijing, if possible. Although even a smaller little empire just here in the in the northwest, you take just Tibet, Mongolia, and the Zhangji, uh, Xinjiang click would be uh, quite a lot to be happy about, actually. Um, I'm just not sure. Anyway, let's keep an eye on this. Let's wait until pretty much the last minute. Okay, stop. Now we're uh, going to reinforce. Okay. Yeah, because remember, to solidify the Republic of China, we will declare a new government, and that's what we're going to need to integrate. And then we'll change our name and our capital will move also. China United for 150 days. Very good stuff. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's uh, it's going to be a lot tougher than... Because, like, the left KMT, it's tough in the beginning. But once you've got a solid base of operations, you can, you can do pretty well. Hmm. And then again, maybe... I'm going back and forth. And, and by the time you guys are watching this, the whole series is done probably. but Or at least mostly done, but... Maybe, I, I kind of don't like the changing of the actual name to the Republic of China because yeah, the revolutionaries are taking control in Mongolia. Because it's just I just like that we're the Ma click. Maybe this should just be the area we control. Oh, there's the Kumail Khanate. <laughs> nice hat. Um, okay, Alashar Da is capitulated. Mm, mechanical computing, maybe, but it probably is more important for us to work on our industry. 
things that are going to help us soon in these wars. But you know what? Let's get the, uh, actually, yeah, 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 we're still going to research it. Let's research the engineering company. We're about to get a third slot anyway right now. Actually, because I'm about to get a third slot, that's why I should just go ahead and get started on this. This is going to take a while. But we'll come back and we'll work on that engineering company a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tibetans are reinforcing the border. They put pressure on the legal Qinghai border with a small amount of guards. It's just a repeat. Uh, repeat event. Um, like last time. See, yep, reinforcing can take a month. Policing, policing in Yushuo. Uh, it seems the Yushu government has officially put forth a small police force in Yushu to remove any possible rebels or traitors from the town that we may have set in our region. While the force is minuscule, it will increase the cost of our raids with more preparation needed before each raid, attack, and infiltration we commit. This will make things difficult. Yunnan Click has fallen into civil war. Oh no. Someone protect Yunyan. Uh, Kamul Khanate has declared war on the Xinjiang Click. Ma Zhongying is leaving Gansu. The butcher of Gansu, Ma Zhongying, along with his associate Ma Fushan, have left Gansu province along with their armies. After some rumors circulated, they had been visited by Kumul General Yulbers Khan. That's over here. And that perhaps he would join the Kumul Rebellion that was soon to occur. It appears now, with the start of the Kumul Rebellion, this has come true, with Zhongying's forces having been seen in Jingai, in Jinjiang territory. The people of Gansu rejoice! The Xinjiang clique has erupted into war. It seems like the western gate between China and Central Asia has broken down into violence once again. Governor Jim Shurin's recent dispute with Kumul has resulted in a large contingent of volunteer soldiers rising up against the army garrison. Rumors say that the Turks to the far west are also preparing to defy the governor once again. The governor of Xinjiang, should he remain Chinese, represents a potential ally to the southern democratic cliques. The Kumliks, however, seem to vary greatly in between respect for Beijing to restless xenophobia. The eastern Turks doubtlessly would separate from China entirely should they win. Yang Zhenji's final failure. Hmm. Yeah, the Kamuls do have their own tree. I don't know what happens after they win, though. I've not played them. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do something out here. But then these guys, the Click, Kuomintang Zhenji, if you go Social Democratic. Okay. Uh, bu -bu okay, we can increase our supremacy here, increase the stability and war support. Seven expeditions to Golok. That'd be pretty damn great, uh, getting 2,000 uh, 2, rifles this early in the game. <clears throat> and of course, there's that political power waiting for us at some point. See, the military schooling for the Tibetans, though, it's 70 days. Hmm... And then over here, there's stuff that's going to help that we could do when we're at war, but we have to be at the war. You know what? Let's mobilize. The beating heart of the Hui people, while our control there is firm, there is more still that could be done to encourage militarization and public service. So this is us working on uh, the, the this northern province. Because because each of the... I, I don't know if I pointed this out before, but each of these three areas is basically um, in regards to the three provinces that we control. So, uh, what else was I going to do here? Yeah, reinforce the border. Mocklick will increase our presence there. We're about, we're going to hit 94 here soon. Uh, but yeah, let's reinforce the border. Oh, we can also do that uh, Dongjiang Mongol raid now. Tibet will get that effect, but it's going to hurt our own infrastructure. Let's see. We're going to get 5% from here, 15. I don't think, I don't think we're going to be able to get 100% control, but let's maybe try. Of course, we're going to keep an eye out on this. See, we are net losing command power. Make no mistake. We can't do this forever. I really screwed up by reinforcing Mao Biao so early. Uh, that first time. Okay. Let's wait for it. Yeah, so getting that 50 uh, army experience will be nice as well. Start getting us on the road to 100. Germany stages declared war on the Indochina. So we got a military buildup in Yushu. Uh, with constant Tibetan raiding of the Jewel of Southern Qinghai and the deployment of Ma Biao to organize defenses against the raids, it was only a matter of time before this moment. 
A longer lasting than usual confrontation between raiders and government militias has resulted in an all-out brawl in the city. Civilian deaths are becoming common as near anarchy has erupted, with no one really knowing how this will turn out. While Ma Biao has assured us that the situation will be handled accordingly, we can only worry until the dust settles. No matter what happens, however, this battle is the obvious fault of Tibetan aggression and a lack of proper authority. Once this is done with, we have to march once and for all into Tibetan lands to prevent this massive loss of life from ever happening again. Peace will be restored, that we promise. The fate of Yushu is on the line with this skirmish, there's no going back from here. Long Yun has secured power in Yunnan. Excellent! We serve the Soviet Union and her unions. Her yun-yuns, as they say. Uh, news have arrived from the Chinese province of Yunnan that the interim governor Long Yun has managed to quell the revolts that has sprung throughout the mountainous province. Despite all setbacks, with the rebellions of both the National Revolutionary Army under Zhu Piedi, Kuomintang militias under Lu Han, and warlord forces by Hu Ryuyu, Long Yun has solidified his position and his bid for governorship has proven successful. Now the Yi general will now be tasked with... The, that's like an ethnic thing. Will now be tasked with looking inward into repairing Yunnan and whipping back in, them back into fighting shape. As for what will Long Yun utilize his armies... They're, they're okay, there's a lot of grammatical stuff here. They need to fix some of this localization. Um, time will tell whether his leadership will start another age of Yunnanese hegemony or mark the end of Yunnan as a belligerent province in the region. Will this stabilize southern China? Indochina's declared independence. We know about that. Oh, wait, what? Oh, okay, no, that's Germany Asia. I thought I had clicked into China for a second. I got confused. There we go. The March of Revenge. Kai Zhoujin was the chief of the Bukwin tribe positioned in Yushu and was left with a hard choice. As he observed his men around the fire, swords in hand, he watched over Ma Biao's regiment, which was completely surrounded by Tibetan soldiers. Um, the cold silence in the air, he took in what remained of peace he had before the bloodshed to come. The peace a fire can bring before an inevitable storm was beautiful in a situation like this, but he knew we had to do. It's time. Kai sent his men charging down to the city, interrupting the cold silence between the two sides as he and his fellow tribesmen charged the Tibetan forces, giving Ma Biao and his small regiment the chance they needed to charge out. Within the hour, the Tibetan forces surrendered to the combined strength of the two forces. What came next was a complete shock to Kai, however. Ma Biao himself started going to every soldier who surrendered, nearly 800 altogether, and began shooting them one by one. When he ran out of ammo, he switched to his Dao and continued, creeping up to each young soldier and mercilessly killing them. Am I the only one who will join into this sport? Was said by Ma Biao once he reached the ten once he finished the 100th soldier. By the way, as a reminder, uh, yeah. Um, where is she? Oh yeah, because Ma Biao's not a general anymore, but it, it's right here. As said by Ma Biao, once he finished the 100 soldier, with the rest of the regiment having joined into the massacre as well, until all the surrendered were dead. Kai contemplated on if he made the wrong choice here, but the die had already been cast on his part. There was no turning back unless he wanted him and his entire tribe to end up like those fallen. Ma Biao and the rest of his men alongside uh, Kai moved further into Ching Kai, as the continuation of conflict was inevitable after such an act now for revenge. So now the Ma Click is going to declare war on Tibet, so we're going to be on the offensive. Ma Biao is going to become a general again. Tibet's going to get the event Death in the Air. And I think they're the ones who are going to gain stability and war support off this. The Yushu Garrison will be deployed under the jurisdiction of the Qinghai Click. Uh, so yeah, let... Damn. The war's going to begin right at the end of the episode. Sorry, guys. I try to... I usually hope that those things don't happen, because now we're only going to be at war for a very brief period. Um, so Ma Click's declared on Tibet. Um, and so now we have the garrison here, the Yushu Brigade, which we're actually going to keep separate so they could be under uh, Ma Biao. Wait, what? There we go. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Ma Biao, our politically connected urban assault specialist, who also, you know, that's a true leader. You know, she, she, uh, you know, she participates in the massacres personally. Uh, you know, she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to come over here. Now, how actually strong is the Tibetan force right now? Uh, not not particularly, probably. Um, okay, the message from Mongolia has come. They have also declared war on us. Uh, so, you know what? Let's actually just review what their forces look like, and then we'll, we'll stop it. So that next episode, the war, we could actually just completely focus on that. Instead of just me attacking for like a minute. Uh, so, Mongolia right now, they have anywhere from 2 to 12 divisions, and they've got 4 factories. Tibet also has 4 factories. 
they have anywhere from four to 13 divisions. They've got, let's call it, let's go ahead and round it up a bit. And we'll say it's about a quarter of a million men in reserve, while Mongolia has about 100,000 men in reserve. So we're sort of in the middle, but of course, we're fighting a two-front war, but the joys of a two-front war is uh, you get the interior lines. Uh, so there's pros and cons to these sorts of things. But I think the plan here is uh, we're going to try to take out... We're probably going to end up trying to focus on Mongolia more than anything because our cavalry is up here. There's a lot of space for us to maneuver around in. Hopefully we can get some encirclements, or maybe if we're super lucky, we could just straight up victory point snipe. But Mongolia, none of their victory points are worth particularly much. So essentially we're going to have to end up probably occupying the entire country. Um, and then Tibet is going to be tricky because it's very tight. Like most of this area is only two tiles wide. Um, because uh, uh, Chungtang here is uh, an impassable area. Um, so we'll have to go to the rest of the Tibetan Plateau. And then uh, Sichuan, I think it's very likely that Sichuan's also going to get involved. And if they get ahead of our forces here in Tibet, uh, then they're going to end up occupying it all. So we've got to stop them from getting in at all so we could just absorb it. Uh, anyway, I'm Conquering History Games, and I'll see you next time when we try to pull that off.